So, so who's the most magical person who you've met there over in the, years? the city? God, that's a good question. Well, you know, seeing Bowie on the street, yeah, is just like there he is. Yeah, <laughs> and you just don't. You wouldn't. You would never dream of going up to him, and you just would leave my leave my home. <laughs> but there's, you know, yeah. like probably the most impressive human being to because. Yeah. Was he ever alive? I mean, is he well, dead? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we um, <laughs> we lived there one year, and we lived on Elizabeth Street, which is near Lafayette Street, where his apartment um, was. Yeah. And um, I never saw him. My wife and Marie saw him on the street a couple of times. And the, the guy in the local gym in Astor Place. <laughs> He used to really enjoy telling people, this is the gym that David Bowie goes to. And he said, you know, uh, David Bowie famously had a character that he sang in called the Thin White Duke. And this guy said, if it wasn't for my gym, he'd be the Fat White Duke. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, I mean, it's amazing when you see, see these legends walking around. I mean, my, yeah. my uh, I still quite, don't quite believe that this happened, but I think it's 10 or 11 years ago now. We were living there for a year with myself and my wife and the kids. And um, I was writing a column for the Sunday Independent newspaper back here in Ireland every week. And on the Wednesday night, we went to see Patti Smith yeah. playing. And, um, and it was great. And so my column that week was a review of the gig. I just wrote what a marvellous gig it was. So I could go into Baruch College in Manhattan on the Monday morning where I was teaching at the time. And there's an email from the Sunday Independent saying, uh, we, we've received this email overnight from somebody, and it's signed Patty Smith. Mm-hmm. And, and she says that because of Twitter and, and all of that, she read your review, and she wanted to get in touch. So I write back, convinced this is my friend, John McDermott, taking the piss out of me. Everybody, <laughs> all my friends know, like I've loved Patty Smith since I was 14. So I tend to be right back, dear Miss Smith, th- th- yeah, I hear you want to get in touch. So she writes back, thank you very much for that very gracious review. Sometime when I'm in Dublin, we must have a cup of tea. So I write back, still convinced it's a piss take, and I go, yeah. well, I'm actually in Manhattan at the moment, and I'm teaching in a college which is 12 blocks from your house, not that I'm a stalker. <laughs> um, and she says, oh, that, cool, so come around this afternoon. So it was the day before Christmas Eve, and I went, I bought her a book of photographs of Bob Dylan, who she, who she loves, who seems to be the unifying team here, and a bunch of lilies, because I thought, you know, Patty Smith probably likes lilies, and I went to the house, I won't say what street it's on, and walked up the steps. There wasn't a doorbell, and I knocked on the door, and until the moment the door opened, I just wouldn't have believed that this was possible. Patty Smith steps forward into the porch, doesn't say anything, just puts her arms around me. And I thought, God, you can kill me now. I have like, this is, this is fine. So we, so we go, go into the house and up the stairs, past the room where she's got her guitars, like you have here, and, uh, you know, books, photographs. And it's still, like, it's very, very surreal, because in my head, uh, She's like punk rock Patti Smith, who I loved when I was 14. But Patti Smith is now, you know, in her 70s. So she still has all the kind of wildness and all the attitude. But at the same time, the kind of clarity and the wisdom of an elderly person. And we sat in her front room. She asked me to bring her a book of mine. So I I brought the book that I had out at the time. And at a certain point, she said, OK, let's, let's go down to the front room. You can read me a book. She opened a bottle of port um, that she had. And uh, so I drank about half of it, just for Dutch courage. She drank a tiny little drop. And she said, so do you sit there and read to me um, for half an hour? So I sat in the front room, and I read to her from this book, Redemption Falls, for half an hour. And at one point, she picked up a battered 12-string guitar, and she played a few chords and at half five I went home. It was the day before Christmas Eve, as I said, and as I as I left 
she said to me, what are you doing now? And I said, I've got to buy some presents for the kids. So Patty Smith steps out onto the street and says, well, if you go down Broadway there, there's a Toys R Us. <laughs> and, and then she said, no, nah, actually forget it. I did my time as a mom. And, um, and I, I walked home through the snow thinking, did that actually happen? But, but it, it did, the kind of gift that only New York um, can give.